Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials. All right, boys, come on. There we go. Good boys. All right. Were you supposed to be a hipster at his first award show? Huh. You know, I'm surprised that you guys don't recognize me by now. I mean, it's like I've been watching you for the last year, and I just feel like we're old friends. Friends don't steal cool stuff from friends. Okay. I did that for your own good. Nobody should have objects that powerful. You know, it's a surprise that you guys haven't blown yourselves up yet. I have blown myself up, actually, a couple times. That's not your call. We need that cool stuff to make cool stuff. Nobody should have that much power, okay? You guys make effects and your creators use them to destroy things. They can visit your website and they can download any content they want. It's just not regulated. Is this an ad? Shh, the guy's monologuing. Now, I don't want to have to kill you guys, but I'm going to do what I have to do. As of now, Production Crate is owned by Unicorp Industries, and as such, we will be accessing only certain customers that we find ideal, and we'll also be raising the price by a few thousand dollars each year. Sorry, boys. <laughs> you really thought it'd be that easy. Adrian, laser eye this sucker. With pleasure. <laughs> Okay, you're embarrassing me. Did you guys miss that one part where I said I've been watching you for the last year? That little bionic eye you're so obsessed with? Yeah, that's one of Unicorp Industries' best products. In fact, I know it shoots lasers, but it also lets me see what you see. I've grown more powerful than you can even conceive. <laughs> You've already lost before the game has even started. There's one item you haven't collected yet. What are you going to do, bend time and space around me? That's great. <coughs> we get him? If you throw one more moon at me, I'm going to lose it. Ah, yes. Finally, I got you. Now, I don't want to have to kill you guys. You know, actually, I don't think I can kill you, Chris, because I've tried so many times that I've almost lost count. And you, Adrian, well, I've been watching you for the last year, and I've kind of sort of come to like you as a person. But I still have to get rid of you guys. So, uh, bye now. <sighs> I like this thing. Whoa, that Unicorp Industries guy is a real jerk. Sure is, man. Yeah, hey, creators, if you see him around, make sure to throw a moon at him. We're gonna teach you how. The first thing you need if you're going to throw a moon is a dang moon. Where are you gonna get that? I'll tell you. In our Planet Killers collection, we have a clip called Moon Destruction Black Hole. We don't need the part where it starts shrinking, but the beginning part has a lot of rubble and smoke, and that is gonna work real, real nicely for us. Oh. For the shockwave part, we're gonna need a shockwave. We have these 20 new awesome 4K shockwave assets on Production Crate, so feel free to pick one of those. We also have a couple free ones, so free users, you're not left out. To make this shockwave wrap around the moon, you'll need to drop it in a comp that is twice as wide as it is tall and apply a CC sphere effect to that. We don't want any shading on this, so let's twirl down the shading settings and change the ambient to 100 and everything else to zero. The ambient actually goes up to 200, which just makes it brighter. You can use that to your advantage if you're having trouble seeing your shockwave. Now just drop this over your moon and tint it purple or green or red or blue or... Or purple, let's not get crazy. Adrian, let's talk meteors. Let's talk meteors. On Production Crate, we've got this super sick meteor clip. Yeah. This is going to be our hero meteor. It was built in 3ds Max with fume effects by a genius. We are gonna <laughs> wanna use some smaller meteors in the back as well. We can make those with trap code Particular. Particular is a third party plugin, but it's, it's really cool, okay? Just super duper flip and flopping cool, you might yeah. even say. I might, one of us might. As our particle texture, we're going to use one of the aerial explosions from, yep, footagecrate.com. There are a few to choose from. First, we need to prepare 
favorite for use in particular and make it match both our meteor and our scene a little bit better. Drop it into a comp that is small and square like, like Chris. Adrian <laughs> and beat me to I it. got there first. <laughs> Ours is 400 by 400 pixels. Shrink it down and move it so that it starts right in the middle of the comp. You can use the title action safe guides to help you out a little bit. It sounds real helpful. To get the colors to match, it'll be easier if we color our smoke and fire separately. What? How are we gonna do that? Well, let's start with the smoke. Okay. Add a tritone effect and use it to steal a mid-tone color from the meteor asset. This won't look quite perfect, so you can add a levels effect and put it before the tritone mm -hmm. and use that to brighten up the smoke until it matches better. Now the smoke looks good, but the fire is obviously a trash. Garbage. So let's duplicate the explosion and use an extract effect to remove all the black smoke and apply a hue and saturation effect to shift it a little bit more towards yellow. That's looking a bit better. <laughs> One last step will be to add some shading to give our meteors a more 3D look. Now, Particular has some options for shading, but they can be hard to work with, so it is easier to just do it here. Duplicate the smoke layer and offset it, put it on a multiply transfer mode, and hit the preserve underlying transparency switch, or as we like to say, PUTS switch. The PUTS switch. PUTS is an acronym for preserve underlying transparency switch. Make sure that's under the fire because fire gives off its own light, so it doesn't need shading. In our main comp, bring that particle comp we just made into it. <laughs> Poetry. <laughs> In our main comp, bring that particle comp we just made into the main comp and poke its eye out. <laughs> poke its eye out. And now let's go ahead and animate an After Effects light with the name Emitter, with a capital E, so Particular can read it, in 3D space and fly it from the moon to the ground. Then make a new solid, apply the Particular effect, tell it to use light emitters, making sure the emitter size is zero. The velocity is also going to be zero, as are the velocity random, distribution, and motion. Particles per second, is going to vary depending on how fast your light is moving, but in our case, we just use 400. You want to turn it up until your meteor looks full, like it doesn't have a bunch of holes in it. Yeah. In the particle settings, you're going to want to make the particle type a sprite. We'll select our particle comp as the texture and the time sampling to start at birth stretch. We'll bring the life down to 2 and the life random to 50%. This will make it so not all the particles play at the same speed. Under size, you'll want to change it to a size that looks good to you, obviously, and you can add some size randomness as well to get some variation. Under rotation, we'll bring the random rotation up just a little to add some additional variation to the particles, but not too much. If we turn it up super high, it will make it so our shading and physics don't make as much sense. If you want even more variation, Chris, you want more variation? Uh, no, I'm good, but you know, in case. <laughs> well, in, in a magical fantasy world where you did want more variation, you could get away with bringing up the opacity random just a little bit. Or the opacity random if either, you either one speak will work. English. Now that all that's been done, you can start duplicating and moving your lights around to make more meteors. And you can add as many as you want. You only need the one particular layer. This is neat. Let's just add a couple more. Yeah, sure. And a few more. Okay, I mean, a little too much now. No, I think I think the shot could benefit from hey, some more. Adrian, pull, pull it back a little bit. Chris, too. we need these. Dude, more dude that's meteors. too much. That's too much. Oh, God, no. For this trippy bird's eye view shot, we used a satellite photo of Production Crate's secret headquarters. <laughs> and we made it 3D and pushed it way back into Z space. The meteors are exactly the same as the way we just did them. Hmm. The explosion on the ground is called Top View Multiple Dust Explosions. It's on footage, okay? <laughs> I love the names. There's another clip on there called Multiple Dust Explosions, which is the same thing, but it's from a front-facing view, which is perfect, because now we can just tint it a dark color and use it as a shadow. Nice. Make sure both of these are 3D as well. I push them back in Z space to, the, to put them right on top of the ground. Now since our ground is 3D and our particular meteors are 3D objects, we can animate an After Effects camera to move and twist around, and that is what's gonna make the shot look really cool. Oh man, this destruction shot is super cool. And the best part, it's super easy. It's all footage great, baby. There's a new clip coming to town and it's called Debris Impact Explosion. Just download that and drop it in. You might want to use a levels to make the colors match your footage. There's another clip on there called Ground Plow to Cam Asphalt. <laughs> the names are amazing. In our case, we use this effect three times. Once on either side and once in the middle. In the middle one, we colored it yellow to 
to match the yellow stripe which is on the ground using the tritone effect. Also, if you didn't shoot on asphalt, you can also use the ground plow to cam dirt instead. Yeah, we got we got options. Ring ring. Hey, Adrian, did you ring 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 ring? Adrian, did you hear that phone ringing in my voice? I did. Oh, hey, it's David. He's gonna break down how he made the debris effect. Take it away, David. Thank you guys. The debris was made in 3DS Max using ray fire to break up the box into thousands of tiny pieces. Using a force to blast up the fragments gave us the motion that we needed. More smaller fragments were then added after that to give the immense detail for the appearance of rock being broken up into smaller pieces. Thanks David. For this shot of the aftermath, we used some debris textures from Graphics Crate and some of the clips from the Giant Tornado Collection on Footage Crate to simulate wind and dust in the air. I, know, love, I love the Tornado Collection wind I effects. I love them. Yeah, yeah they're, they're so cool. Fantastic. You're absolutely right. We already did a Thanos Portal effect in the last tutorial. If you haven't seen that, you probably don't have your notifications turned on. What's up with that? I don't I don't know. Some people, you know, some people. Can't trust anybody. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, this tutorial was stellar. Uh, we really reached for the moon on this one. Uh, We're glad we had the space to shoot it. So bad. <laughs> All right, thanks for the suggestion, craters. Come on, shut up, Chris. <laughs> All right, that does it. Make sure to tune in for the next tutorial as we fly through space in a wormhole.